Well, what I'd like to do is to start where Bruce left off. Oh, by the way, just uh, it occurred to me when uh, I was being introduced about the 14 years in, in the business world, and, and Doug said, well, something made him transition. I can tell you it was living in fear for 14 years. <laughs> it was living in protection. I don't know if you spend any time in the corporate world, but there's a tendency to uh, circle the wagons and, uh, and hope it's, uh, you're going to be safe. So I had done my time there. I saw a lot of pain. I saw a lot of opportunity, but in the position I was in, I couldn't do much with it. And so I really felt in the midst of really having everything that uh, you're supposed to want. Uh, good job, uh, big bucks, uh, all the creature comforts you could ask for, but what I noticed was my soul was hurting. I wasn't okay there. I wasn't okay just getting paid to do something I really didn't want to do and to sell something I didn't care about. So that was a crisis in a sense for me, but it was a real uh, spiritual emergence as well. It was a coming out. It was a, a, a time to choose. Did I want to do my heart's desire or did I just want to fold into the, uh, the norm and do what, what I was expected to do? And I made the change. And 14 years later, I can highly recommend doing it. It's, uh, it's challenging at the time, especially uh, when I did it and the way I did it, because I walked away from a very high-paying job and it was a very good job by all people's standards, but it, uh, it wasn't feeding the right part of me. So I'm here tonight and I'm really grateful to Doug and to Bruce for the opportunity to share with you some of the things I've discovered over the last 14 years uh, about the nature of change and about the nature of beliefs and their effect on our lives. So let's get going. I want to start with Bruce's conclusions plus one that I added to the list. Do you remember his slide that said perception controls behavior? Very powerful words coming especially from a biologist. Perception controls the genes. Perception rewrites genes. And where I'm going with this is perception also rewrites behavior. I expect there's just uh, two or three of you in the room maybe that might have a few behaviors you'd like to rewrite. Uh, I certainly did, especially 14 years ago. And so my search was to find the easiest, uh, sanest, most effective, and quite frankly, the, the most painless way to do it. Uh, graduate school didn't teach me about the painless part. In fact, it was all about go back, find the pain, work through the pain, and that's the only way to change your beliefs. Uh, I do have a different story to tell you at this point, uh, quite, a, quite a lot different than that schooling. The thing about perception, because Bruce used the word a lot and then he squeezed it together with the word uh, belief, I'd like to make a little bit of a distinction there for us uh, this evening. Perception, in my opinion, is awareness. The dictionary calls it awareness, but it's shaped by belief. Belief actually precedes perception. And I'm talking about how that happens, but the important fact about it is that beliefs control your perceptions. If you rewrite the beliefs, you can rewrite perception. And if you rewrite the perception, you can rewrite the genes and the behavior. So there really is no distinction, if you're in the healing arts, especially the complementary ones, between mind and body. It's just a dif different expression of us, who we are. I want to define beliefs as a working definition anyway in the following way. Beliefs are conclusions derived from experience, and, uh, information and or experience. They can be either conscious or subconscious. And what I mean by this, let me give you an example. Beliefs uh, derived by conclusions from information would be the kind of thing that would happen if you got jury duty and you weren't at the event that's being tried. Let's say it's a criminal case. You weren't there present when the so-called crime was committed, but you're sitting in a jury situation. You're now required to listen to information from two attorneys telling you they're getting you ultimately to come to some truth, some level of belief about what happened in that event you couldn't attend. So you're creating a belief through information alone. The second version of that is experience. Uh, typical experiences say you're two years old, imagine, and you've never experienced uh, fire before. So you're crawling around and there's a candle left on and you're getting curious because you haven't had an experience with a candle or fire yet. So as uh, most kids that are two years old, they'll move towards anything they don't understand to discover what it is. So you move closer and closer to that candle and isn't it interesting, so you stick your little hand out, like you do with everything else, to touch it and grab it and see what it is like and sure enough, you get burned. Well, as soon as you get burned, you've had an experience. Now it's not just curiosity that's associated with that candle. 
there's an experience and a conclusion that is drawn from touching that fire, which turns into a belief, which ultimately, as I'll, as I'll show you, affects your future perception of candle. In the beginning, there's not much uh, of a differentiated perception, but in, after an experience like that, there certainly is. And then the, uh, I'm going to talk a lot more about the conscious and subconscious mind, because this is where, in my opinion, the greatest amount of ignorance exists in mainstream psychotherapy is that we've been trying to work, uh, trying to change subconscious beliefs uh, with lots of conscious means. And it turns out the two minds are so different that it's no wonder it doesn't work very well. Your beliefs actually determine your biological and behavioral reality. If I had to, to just describe Bruce's presentation in total in one statement, this would be it. Virtually every part of our lives is governed by our belief systems. And we'll talk about that a little more too. Do you remember this slide? Here's the filter representing our belief systems. And if you look at it from this point of view, it's really a powerful thing to witness. Beliefs are really the filters of reality. You don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. In fact, you can't not do that. It's the most interesting thing is that each of you sitting out there looking at this presentation are actually having a very different experience of it. You all have the illusion it's the same experience. You'll talk about having been here, but it's not the same experience for you at all. Your set of filters about who I am, what I'm saying, where this place is, how you're feeling right now, that all profoundly affects your experience of this evening. So you think, well, it was a fact. Here's what happened. But then you start talking to your friend that you came with or someone else that attended this particular uh, event, they had a very different experience. So it's always that way. And if you can remember that, as soon as you're thinking, well, I've got the facts straight about something, remember, the facts are your subjective opinion, your filters of reality. And that's what, that's what perceptions are all about. That's what really matters here. Beliefs create perceptions, and they affect virtually every area of your life, as I mentioned. Self-esteem, for instance, I mean, your perceptions either define you as worthy or worthless in relationships, either loved or, or unloved. Uh, with respect to prosperity, that's a pretty popular one. You either can attract money easily in, in your life or your perception is it's hard to get and hard to keep and you'd mismanage it anyway. Uh, you look at your job performance, if your perception of yourself is, as a competent person or an incompetent person, it's going to make a heck of a lot of difference in terms of how you perform your job and also the perception of others, of course. Mental health, you can see yourself as generally a happy person or a depressed one. Physical health, I mean, Bruce's presentation makes that pretty clear. The psychology profoundly impacts the biology of the body. Spiritual outlook, we have so many different spiritual systems and ways of looking at the hologram of God, so to speak, and all of the facets of it that uh, it is about perception when we're looking that causes us to, uh, to believe and act in the way we do. And, of course, the list goes on and on. Remember this slide? This is our friend Ecstasy. She represents joy. She represents growth in Bruce's model, moving towards something that's pleasurable. Do you remember this one? The scream, it's called. So this one, of course, represents protection and fear. So my question to you is, if you had a choice, if you could choose between Living like this, having your life and the undertone of your life being this feeling that you get when you look at this, or this, which would you choose? Oh no, let's review again. <laughs> it's a tough choice. Would it be her? Or would it be him? All right, if you're having any trouble uh, uh, deciding here, or if you've decided you'd prefer this one, I only have one recommendation. See your doctor immediately and get your medication adjusted. <laughs> because under normal conditions, people are going to pick her. We want uh, consciously to have our lives work. We want the life, our lives to be filled with joy and pleasure and to look forward to each day.